Welcome everyone to Overcome Podcast, episode 55. Uh, in today's episode, uh, we have an IFBB Pro with us, and it will be very interesting to talk about her journey into fitness. Um, really looking forward for this one. So welcome, Mary Abado. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Absolutely. Thanks for uh, joining, uh, for your time. Mary, um, I, I learned about you from Philip from Aging Evolution, and uh, as soon as I saw uh, some of the things that he was talking about, I was like, "Wow, I have to have her in my show uh, to to really <laughs> understand this journey." And coincidentally, actually, you posted something recently on your Instagram. I think it was uh, like two days ago about uh-huh. uh, your journey, and you said that. Um, you started really late uh, to, you know, competing and, and training and everything. So can you go back and describe, uh, first of all, what led you to, to start training at the age of 45, right? Well, that's true. I was kind of a, a late bloomer. Yeah. <laughs> um, I was never into uh, fitness or um, never had any athletic background, not even in a high school or in college. So, um, what led me to uh, fitness, um, it was kind of a um, few things happening at the same time. Um, I, I could say I was uh, uh, on a crossroads in my life. Um, my sons were out of home, house, they went to college. So, I was a uh, newly um, em- empty nester mm-hmm. and dealing <laughs> with that issue um, as every parent who experienced that. A um, couple of years earlier, I had a, a hysterectomy uh, due to um, overgrown ovarian um, a cyst that had to be removed. And uh, at the same time, I was going through some personal um, um, challenges. Let's call it challenges in my personal life. Uh, so, um, to get myself out of all of that and to refocus on me, um, I start working out first in the house at home, um, and eventually, a um, year later, I enrolled for the first time uh, in a gym um, and start training. So I was about 45 years old at the time, mm-hmm. so pretty late. And uh, in, in, were you doing everything on your own or you have a personal trainer? No, I did everything on my own. Um, I started uh, working out at home, um, researching a little bit online, uh, which led me to um, starting my fitness um, uh, Facebook page. Just for fun and to motivate myself, I also had a lot of uh, friends and uh, um, ladies asking me um, what is my regiment, uh, um, my training. So I thought, well, I'm going to put some exercising videos out there. Uh-huh. And uh, it turned out to be very successful. Um, I, in two years, um, got about or close to 100,000 uh, followers. Wow. Um, So at that point, I thought, well, maybe I should uh, take a course in personal training because I didn't feel comfortable giving uh, advices to people just like that without having some kind of um, knowledge. Absolutely. Um, So that led me to um, finishing um, uh, online uh, training course and becoming a personal trainer. Um, and at the same time, continuing with my training. And um, eventually, um, I thought about maybe competing just to further motivate myself to stay on that track and to motivate and inspire other uh, ladies who are in the same position as me. So that's kind of how everything started. Awesome. Right, so this is this is great because I I really like the fact that you uh, first start study about physical education and and got your certification 
because as you said you, you don't feel comfortable to give advice if you were not certified so I, I think that that's fantastic but in between that and competing what really triggered you to compete because there's a big difference between going to a diet and, and have a good regimen and everything to step on stage is step, step on stage is something completely it was something completely new to you so what really drove you uh, to absolutely. that absolutely yeah I didn't even know that uh, a bikini division exists in bodybuilding. I was uh, not interested in bodybuilding in any way. Uh, But um, at that time, I got my first job in um, LA Fitness uh, um, uh, Club. And um, one of the managers, uh, she used to compete. So we had a conversation and she mentioned it. She said, uh, why wouldn't you try competing? and um, um, advised me to check uh, Muscle Contest uh, web uh, page. So I did that and um, I looked at it. I said, wow, this looks interesting. Maybe I, could, I should really uh-huh. do it. Uh-huh. And um, looked through their schedule, found something in like uh, 12 weeks from the date because um, as I research online, I figure out that you need kind of 12 weeks to get ready. And they were talking about um, um, certain programs, training and diet. So I gather all these informations and sign up myself for the first uh, um, competition I found um, um, on the website and uh, start preparing myself for, for the, the, the show um, all by myself. So wow. uh, it was interesting because I didn't know what I was really doing and um, which made it really uh, interesting. And I learned a lot during that process, but um, I found some um, meal prep online um, and um, training uh, program mm-hmm. uh, yeah. and did my training all by myself. I didn't have a coach. I didn't even know that uh, we need to do certain posing routine on a stage. Um, I checked a couple of um, YouTube videos where I learned about first pose, front pose, and back, uh, back pose. And that was <laughs> all I knew before I actually stepped on the stage, um, which was. Uh, crazy because I'm not that kind of person uh, who would do things like that. But when you find yourself on the crossroads in your life, you are kind of, um, and you decide to open up yourself to new things, you push yourself and do things that you normally wouldn't do. You learn how to be comfortable in a very uncomfortable situation. And then the and that's really what really makes you stretch outside of your boundaries and discover new things. And I bet you that after you finish that experience, you were like, oh, I got to do it again because I'm going to do better. Exactly. And, you know, when you don't know better, sometimes it's even better because you don't know what to expect and you just kind of follow the program and um, you live in the moment and whatever happens, happens. And if you find yourself in kind of a weird situation um, you just you know wing it and you try to you know do whatever everyone else is doing so um, on the day um, of the show um, I remember uh, and and today it's I always giggle when I think about it I was in a lineup with other girls and um, um, looking at the stage and trying to figure out what girls before me are doing, in front of me are doing. So that's the way I learned how to do my first routine. And um, I can tell you that that first time going on the stage, I had a, um, a less uh, of, of um, I, I was not nervous, you know, because I really didn't know what I was doing. And at that point, it didn't matter. I just wanted to do it. How many years it took for you to... Uh, you were 45 when you started. Uh, how old were you when you did your first competition? 
46. <laughs> wow. <laughs> it was like, that was fast. It yeah. was that quick. Yeah, it was the, it was really quick. Um, uh, as I said, I, I decided to compete, found, found the show, uh, took me 12 weeks to get ready. Of course, um, I, I actually placed well. I was uh, I took a third uh, um, in my class, uh, which was great because um, it was my first time going uh, to a show and, and really not having any kind of uh, guidance. You were... You said that you never really train or anything, but you were never out of shape, right? I mean, uh, no. for the point that you started, uh, you just had to build a little bit of muscle, but you were already lean and everything. Exactly. Right? Um, all my life, I never gained more than a few pounds up and down, except when I was pregnant, I gained 40 pounds, which I lost two, three weeks after, you know, having the babies and um, was back to my normal size. Uh, so I, even today I wear the same, I can wear the same clothing that I wore when I was in my 20s. So my body um, never fluctuated too much. I always stayed in the same, um, with the more or less same weight, mm -hmm. uh, same shape. Mm -hmm. And um, mm -hmm. the reason why I did so well, um, from a get-go is um, thanks to my genetics. Yes. Um, yes. I had, I was lean, I was, uh, you know, um, my shape was uh, good, um, symmetry was there. Um, the only thing I was missing was muscle, but, um, and whatever muscle I could build in these 12 weeks, uh, that, that was all I had that day. Um, so I won, I mean, I placed well because of my genetics. Uh, first and foremost. Yeah. At some point you got your pro card. How old were you when you got your pro card? I got pro card one year, exactly exactly one year from my first show. Uh, July, uh, my first show was uh, July uh, 2016. I got my pro card July 2017. Wow, this um, is impressive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I hired, uh, uh, after that first show, I, I realized that I want to continue doing that. So I hired a coach and uh, I did another um, two shows, which I won um, both and I qualified for uh, nationals. Um, so my uh, um, first national show was actually my fourth show altogether where I won two pro cards and an overall uh, and again, I had a little bit more muscle. I was a little bit more refined in my presentation. I had the right suit and, uh, you know, um, everything. So uh, I did improve a lot in that one year, but still um, I had no clue what is waiting for me once I step on a pro stage. It was still, you know, uh, it was still, my body was still not there. So, uh, how many years now you've been competing non-stop? How many years now? Well, this this year is my sixth season, so... Um, so you're 51. It's 51. Yeah, I'm 52. 52. Oh, wow. And uh, I noticed that you just got... Top. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm 53. <laughs> I'm 53. <laughs> You're trying to make me younger. <laughs> well, you look younger for sure. That's definitely. Thank you. Thank uh, you. But uh, you competed recently on Tampa and looks like you did pretty well. Uh, and uh, that post says a lot. You, you really, as you said, you have nothing to prove. You do this for fun. You do this because you like. Um, what is your main advice for... Uh, uh, people not only uh, female but even male that are starting to train after 45 right because there is a lot of people that when they 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 cross over the 40s they have a hard time and it be, it, it definitely becomes a little bit more difficult to recovery uh, everything's a little oh, bit longer so what is your main advice for that well absolutely i well i was maybe in a a little bit different position than most of women in um, their 40s, 50s, because uh, um, 
most of them they still have um, kids at home and 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 uh, husbands and family and um, career uh, and to do this um, as a professional and to um, um, get results the, the, the way I did, um, you really need to put 100% um, of yourself. Um, as you said, we need to train harder uh, than uh, somebody in 20s and 30s, and we need more time to recover. Uh, without recovery, you can't really grow the muscles. So um, I was lucky that um, you know my kids were already uh, on their own. Um, I um, had a, a career job that was very flexible and I was lucky to uh, be able to work only part time. So uh, my whole afternoon is uh, devoted to, to myself and my training. Um, so um, I honestly admire women and men my age a group who um, are competing on a professional level and having a family life and having a career. Um, some of them I know are waking up like early in the morning to do their cardios and training or uh, late at night after work. So um, I, I really admire that. I was lucky that I had the privilege to, 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 to have time. Uh, to devote myself to this um, almost full time as a real professional. Um, so, do you do um, do you do anything uh, special to recovery? Uh, no, nothing special. But you need I need more time to you know I sleep a lot. Um, I need eight to nine hours at night of sleep. Um, and uh, recently, last year. Um, actually, this year, I tried to have a little break in the middle of the day and try to have a little nap after my workout because I just felt that my body needed that extra. Uh, as I'm pushing myself harder and harder, I just felt like, you know, uh, especially when I get close to uh, competition time, when you are already, you know, a low on low calories and, and stressed out, uh, um, I, I realized that sleep it's really important, really yeah. helpful. Yeah. Now, um, do you keep uh, a nutrition well balanced across the year, or you fluctuate a lot as far as the calorie intake? Um, I'm very strict with my my diet. I'm basically no matter if I am uh, competing uh, in competition season or um, off season uh, improvement season. I'm always on a certain uh, meal plan. Um, I don't count macros and all of these things. That's too complicated for me. Uh, and I like to stick to the same routine. I'm that kind of person that, that really works for me. So my coach, um, he uh, prepares all of that for me. He gives me a meal plan and um, it changes a little bit, you know. Um, mostly quantity of food depending on what stage of a pro process um, um, I'm um, you know a program I'm in and so, nowadays you your goal is to compete like once a year or do you do more than one competition a year well at the beginning I competed a lot because I didn't know better I was just like going I was I would compete uh, five to six times a year, wow. which is a lot. That's a lot. So usually um, first part of year, first six months I will um, train and I was off season. And then sometime from June, July until end of the, the year, I would compete. Uh, but then, you know, um, as you get to a pro league, it's a completely another ball game. And, uh, I realized that um, I need more time and it's better to kind of focus on a certain shows and uh, um, do well, you know, instead of do running from yeah, one show to another. Yeah, be more strategic. <laughs> yes, I became definitely more strategic. Um, since 20, 2020 was my best year, um, it, it was a... Um, 
pandemic mm-hmm. here and everything was uh, in a lockdown. Um, so I had really nothing to, better to do than to train. Mm-hmm. And uh, um, once we realized that um, we are on for, because the whole that first part of year, we were not sure if uh, competition will happen at all uh, because of the situation. But uh, then when uh, we got a green light, um, um, I um, competed, uh, I think five times that year. And that was my best year because I won all, I won 11 uh, pro master shows wow. that year. Wow. So, um, so last year, um, last year was a great year as well, um, but I competed only twice because um, I won Tampa, Master, Master Tampa uh, Pro at the beginning of the year. And um, I did another show, uh, was planning to do two more, but then I got a COVID, which completely uh, threw me off my, um, uh, schedule and I was two months out. Uh, um, Did you completely really stop training during that time? <laughs> completely stop training. Um, I was, um, uh, I got COVID end of September, beginning of October. I was two weeks in bed with a very high fever. Uh, didn't eat, uh, didn't drink. Uh, I mean, after two weeks when I got out, when I got out of bed, I had uh, almost 10 pounds less. Wow. And wow. that was all muscle because I was already lean and ready to compete. I was in the middle of my competition, competition season. So um, it took me two months from that point to get back close to where I was before, to, to regain my weight, to, to start training and get strong again. Um, so it, that was a huge challenge and, and it kind of big setback for me after starting so well. Uh, I had so much hope for 2021 um, after, after winning a Master Tampa Pro. That was a, like a huge win for me. Um, so suddenly everything stopped and uh, 2022 I had to, you know, start almost from scratch you know rebuilding Mm -hmm. and um uh, so this competition in tampa now was very special to you then well it was special because um i won last year so i wanted to repeat the 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 same but um i was more excited about uh winning uh um, master uh, world championship uh, two weeks, 10 days earlier in uh, Pittsburgh. That was my uh, main goal at the beginning of the year. I told my coach, um, um, you know, we have a seven months. I-, I want to really get myself ready because I want to compete at that show and uh, I want the title. Wow. Wow. <laughs> so I did, uh, uh, you know, um, I won the uh, um, 40 plus and 50 plus class. Amazing. Uh, so, Amazing. so that was uh, that was uh, my um, biggest achievement and kind of crown on uh, um, 16, actually 17 pro master wins in last uh, two and a half years. This um, is absolutely yeah. outstanding. <laughs> uh, the the numbers speaks to themselves, and I think the, the your approach is very unique as well but there is something that i i'm very interesting to understand uh, because when i read that post you were talking about you don't have anything to prove which is right so what really drives what really drives you to keep competing if you already achieved so much in such a short period of time because there's a lot of people that they compete for 10 years they they don't have half of what you do right so what really drives you now that you already accomplished so much well, that's interesting, and I'm in a position where, um, as I said, I don't have, I don't need to prove anything to anyone. I, I did a lot, and um, um, my brother, who put this uh, trophy shelf over there, he told me there is no more space over there. So you know, don't bring any trophies. You know, we are putting them now on the floor because there is no space for them. Um, but uh, of course, I, I want to compete. I want to uh, continue winning. Uh, 
But uh, at this point, I really want to focus more on um, uh, not proving anything to anyone, but showing that um, women and, and men uh, after over 40 can still um, compete, can uh, still achieve their best uh, physique. Um, and it's not only about look, it's about um, feeling good, uh, uh, being healthy, being strong. And feeling confident. Um, Your level of confidence after all those years probably is through the roof now. <laughs> exactly. And, and there is a lot of women out there who um, have contacted me and, and said, I always thought it's over for me. It's too late to start. I'm already 43. And I'm like, no, I was 45 when I started. You are at the best age to start and to accomplish whatever you want. You just have to, it's not easy. If you put a time, effort, hard work, um, and you know, a lot of sacrifice, this sport is not easy sport. Um, you, but you, no, but you don't have to be a competitor. You don't have to try to be a champion. You can do it just for yourself to lose weight, to feel better, to be healthier, um, it's all about and, and longevity. It's, it's all about longevity, and and and, and, and exactly. as you said, feeling good with yourself. Uh, competition is a plus. It's not for everyone. Some people actually don't no. like it, and that's fine yeah. if you don't like. As long as you uh, are taking care of yourself, that's what really matters. Yeah. Bodybuilding is not for everyone. A lot of people don't understand it. Uh, there are some women who kind of are against it. They feel like uh, women uh, should not have a muscle. <laughs> I get, uh, you know, I, I get mostly positive uh, feedbacks, but there are always some who kind of um, um, are not happy with you and um, uh, don't think uh, bodybuilding is proper for women and they find it ugly or whatever. But th those are few uh, in between, uh, which is normal. But most women are in are encouraged and um, um, they uh, they need somebody to tell them that it's okay it's not all uh, not only okay but it's possible um, a lot of women a lot of women don't want to even to start uh, uh, their fitness journey because they think it's too late for them so I want to change that uh, mindset I, I want to um, show that uh, you can be over 50 and still look great and be in shape and uh, um, compete if you want to and do whatever you want if you want to. Uh, so that's something that I want to focus on going forward. And also I'm hoping to change a mindset of people in the bodybuilding business who kind of look down on the master competitors in general. It's, it's uh, um, I, I don't want to say it's discrimination, but um, it, it's a sport that is based on aesthetics and on some idea of uh, youthfulness and, you know, uh, strength, uh, aging, and especially for women, that doesn't really kind of, uh, belong there in their mind. Uh, so we are a little bit looked at as a maybe second class. I yeah, yeah. So I, I interview a lot of masters already in, in this show. And there are things that uh, time uh, will, will be very uh, hard on you. I, I remember interviewing Leah. She is uh, actually a, a master bodybuilder. She went to, uh, uh, she got her pro car a long time ago, but she was telling me that when she would step on stage as a master, she looked great. She is over 52, but there is one part of her body that uh, just doesn't get fixed, which is a little bit of uh, losing skin on her knee. Uh, well, yeah. because when you get older, your skin is not the same. There exactly. will be some part of your body that will be a little bit loose than others, or you cannot compare. Uh, a, a master, mainly from the skin perspective, when you are evaluating with uh, a young person. Yeah, that, that's absolutely true. But, um, you know, you can only be best you can be. And uh, I, I uh, still could can compete with the much younger women and I win, still win against much younger women. But um, 
so I'm I'm very um, comfortable and um, um, competitive in a master class. Uh, what I'm trying to do, uh, I'm trying to kind of uh, uh, step up a little bit my ranking in an open class, which uh, of course it's not easy because as you said, a uh, body of a woman in her late uh, 40s, uh, early 50s, and a uh, um, young woman in her early 20s or even early 30s who never had kids and um, all of these things, um, it, it's it's different. So um, I have um, same like a person like Leah, um, I have a, a body part that kind of uh, bothers me and that I need to work on a little bit more. So, um, well, uh, you, you can only do as much as... Yeah, but I, I, what I, I think is fascinating <laughs> is that even if you have body parts that you struggle with, the courage to be completely vulnerable and being criticized by judges and everyone else that is uh, watching is a big win, regardless of the placing. So I, I have mm -hmm. so much respect for whoever step on stage and be vulnerable on, only on bikinis and say, hey, yeah. this is what I got. If it is not good yeah. for you, I'm happy and it's good for me, right? So I think that this is really the, the, the achievement. I remember when I did my first show after losing 100 pounds, I got less place on that show, but when I finished, I was so happy because my goal was to be on that stage after being obese for so many years and yes. losing weight. So yeah. I was extremely happy. I didn't really care about placing at that moment because I had achieved my goal. So I think it's uh, very important for every massive competitor to just be proud to be there. Absolutely, and we all have a different goals. You know, as you said, some people step on the stage because they lost a massive amount of weight, of fat, and and they feel good about them, themselves, and they want to, you know, um, uh, showcase that. That um, um, so, whatever is your uh, goal, whatever is your reason, uh, that's okay, and. Um, you know, um, Dexter, um, what is his last name? Um, uh, his bodybuilder, he was um, Olympia, uh, Olympian um, until he, I think he retired at 52 or 53. Um, and his last Olympia, he placed third. So um, I think it's possible, you know, you just have to, you know, work harder than anyone else. And, um, and you know. genetics, genetics is very important, right? I mean, you you are Absolutely. you are very gifted, uh, genetically speaking, for sure. Yeah, that's true. Genetics, but genetics genetics can go only so far. You know, if you don't uh, put a hard work, um, your genetics can only take you so far. You you can't uh, win uh, on genetics forever. Uh, somebody with uh, less genetics, but who works harder than you can beat you. Uh, the thing is, when genetics work hard, um, then yes, when you, you know, are able to combine, hard to beat. Right, when you are able to combine the genetics with hard work, then you have the perfect combo, and then you can achieve a lot of things for sure. Now, uh, talk a little bit about this partnership with uh, Aging Evolution. How how that is going? Well, it's been it's been a while. I think they contacted me. Uh, I probably when I became pro around that time, and um, we've been you know working uh, together ever since. Uh, it's amazing group of people who are promoting uh, um, older athletes, um, and um, we thanks to them. I, I got a couple of uh, different gigs and. Uh, I'm very grateful to be part of uh, of that um, um, aging evolution group. Um, especially, I want to thank uh, Phil Dodson. He he's a spokesperson for all of us. Yeah, Phil is great. Uh, I met here here in Dallas and I uh, worked with him in some projects back in the day. He's a he's a great guy and uh, definitely investing on showing that it is possible uh, to continue to evolve after 40s, after 50s, uh, in, in, in promoting a, a health lifestyle. So I think it's a, it's a great initiative and have ambassadors like yourself uh, that can walk the talk because it's 
very easy to just talk things, but if you don't really prove that you can do it and you just stay on the theoretical aspect of it, uh, it's yeah. not really uh, powerful, but you show year over year that you keep getting better. I Again, I went to the, the your Instagram and looked to the, the competition pictures and your evolution is clear and every picture you are looking better and better. Oh, thank you for saying that. I, I do appreciate it. But um, that, that's the thing, you know, um, success can be gratifying just like plain success, like winning and getting the hardware only up to certain point. And then once you achieve certain, you know, um, level of um, success, uh, you want to do something more. You want to inspire other people. Um, winning is not enough uh, at that point, you know. So I think all of us um, have to kind of um, inspire and motivate others. I would like to really say thanks uh, for you to taking the time on this Friday uh, afternoon after uh, uh, the, the, the great performance at the Tampa Pro uh, to talk to us today here. Thank you very much. Keep inspiring everyone. Uh, keep doing this uh, great work you do because I'm pretty sure there is a lot of people that are using you as a mirror and will uh, try to accomplish something based on, on you know, the, the figure that you bring and the enthusiasm that you bring for uh, the sport. Thank you so much. I, I do appreciate it. I hope, um, you know, I will continue doing it and um, um, enjoying um you know, being a part of a really great sport, you know, um, bodybuilding is not for everyone, but um, it's a great sport. And uh, if you have a right approach, uh, uh, it can be very uh, satisfying. Absolutely. And uh, <laughs> this whole community is very positive and we really need uh, being positive nowadays with all these struggles that everyone is living. Fitness always brings some enthusiasm, and some positive aspects. So keep up the great work. Thank you very much for joining. Absolutely. Us. Thank you so much. Thank you, Yuri. All right, everyone. This is a wrap for today's episode. Thank you very much for your time. Uh, stay tuned. We have much more to do.